Greetings Duplicant and welcome to the Breach. The time has come to start a new playthrough of Oxygen Not Included. This time on the playthrough I've gone for the classic start because I want to do some big projects. On my Twitch playthrough I'd got as far as building a petroleum boiler but then I forgot about the problem with uh, magma solidifying inside a mesh tile and it being impossible to dig out. As we're starting on the large asteroid, I plan on doing everything on an industrial scale. Well, that's my future plan, but for now, let's get sorted on the basics. In the first cycle, we need to make sure we have somewhere for our duplicants to sleep, and we also need to set up a toilet. As you can see, just to the right of the portal, we do have a large amount of carbon dioxide, which is going to be very important to make a carbon sink very quickly as well. As you can see, I've mapped out an area where the bedroom is going to be, or the barracks as it should be, and then beneath the portal, I'm going to have my toilets. Because of the location of the clean water, I'm going to have to set the toilets back a bit to have a room for a pump. As I've said on previous playthroughs, these are just temporary buildings and structures. They will not necessarily be where I finally build my base. My duplicants have been working hard and have uh, dug out an area for all the beds but as they've dug out I've spotted a natural gas vent over to the right which is very close to the start which is great news for me and my duplicants. It is just a personal preference but I do prefer using natural gas to burning coal and I've no idea why it's just it's just the way it is for me. I always seem to use coal as the backup generators and never as a primary source of power. Well, it's great having the gas vent so close to the base, but I've got more pressing problems at the moment, which is digging out the toilets and a carbon dioxide pit. My duplicates have a lot of work to be doing, so while that's happening, I will sort out the schedules. In the beginning, I like to sort out two blocks for eating and uh, using the washroom and two blocks for sleeping. I also prefer to spread the duplicates out over different schedules so there's always a number of duplicates around at the same time just in case one gets trapped. As you can see, I've got three basins and three outhouses and the pitch pump down to supply water to the basins. I'm also trying to dig out a sink for all the carbon dioxide as well, which I'm going to have to make a decision whether the toilets are more important or getting rid of the carbon dioxide out of the bedrooms more important. As there's plenty of work for the duplicates to be getting on with, it's time to sort out their priorities. This really helps in the early game when you have a low amount of duplicates that are specialised. For example, I don't like everybody doing any farming because I just want the farmers to do it to have the increased drop rate for seeds because I'll be able to use those seeds later on to feed the fish instead of using the precious algae which I can use to produce oxygen when needed on new bases. Well, the duplicates have got the first two basins built and we're about to start filling them with fresh water. The poor old duplicates at the moment are having to hold their breath while they're working. The oxygen hasn't managed to uh, push the carbon dioxide out of the way, but I'm happy the duplicates will have enough time to finish the build off before this evening. Well, 
Well, we're adding another source of oxygen by uh, exposing the oxalite, and we've also dug down to give the CO2 more place to go once the oxygen pressure increases. Well, it's the end of the first cycle and the duplicants are just managing to finish the last uh, outhouse. The location and the quantity of the carbon dioxide on this map did make it a little bit more interesting to start off with. You definitely don't normally have to worry about the CO2 this much on the first cycle. With the spare time they have before bedtime, we're going to dig out some more area. And also I've noticed our first hatch, which is nice. With a new cycle beginning, I've come up with some more plans. I'm going to dig out some of the levels. I'm also going to want to main oxygen pressure, so I'm building a hamster wheel next to the gate to get the light bonus. This hamster wheel will be in use until I manage to get the uh, natural gas vent tapped and in use. With the quantity of CO2 that's already in the base, I need to make sure that I don't lose oxygen pressure at any time or that will just quickly push low pressure oxygen out of the way and climb up the base, making the low level bedroom unusable. Through the magic of editing, let's speed this section up a bit. Uh, I want to explore and make a big inroad on digging out an area for my base. This will give me the chance to see what biomes I am surrounded by and also see if I have access to any vents and geysers like the natural gas that I've already seen. By aggressively digging out the area, it'll give me a large supply of food to keep me going, but it also allows me to make plans on which biome I'm going to go and attack first. Normally the first biome I want to go for is a swamp biome to give me access to the thimble reed for when I want to set up waste water disposal so I can set up a proper washroom with showers for my duplicates. Well, Harold here is looking a fine choice. Ranching and also Masterworks skill tier 3. Uh, unconstructive and it can't do attacking. I think it's going to be this one. Sandstone, I've got lots of that. Decorating, uh, I've already got Harold. And Turner's got allergies, so it looks like it's going to be Howell. Thank you very much. Well, let's get Howell in his own schedule, shall we? After that, we'll spend Harold's skill point. What I failed to recognise was Harold doesn't have construction. He has the masterwork skill, but will he still be able to build stuff once I've made the actual, like, statues, etc.? I'm going to start Harold off as a gopher, go fetch this, go fetch that, by giving him the improved carrying. And then we'll just tweak his priorities as well. For the last quarter cycle, the duplicates have been digging out the bare bones for our base, but now it's time to work on some upgrades. For that, we need the research station. Once the station's up and running, I'm going to beeline to get all the needed items for a grand hall to improve the duplicates' morale. We have skipped forward two cycles, which is going to give us the opportunity to, to build somewhere for our duplicates to eat. It's not going to be a grand hole just yet. We still need to uh, research a few more things, but we're getting there. I've laid out the tables, leaving room for the water cooler and a plant pot. 
this isn't necessarily where I'm going to have my great hall in the future, but it's just a convenient place to put it for now. Well, the portal is activated, so let's see what they're offering us. At this stage of the game, I'm more interested in the duplicate labour, so Devon looks quite good. Suit wearing, tidying and farming, with his only negative, his decreased germ resistance. So I think that's our choice. Oops, I sorted out his priorities but not his schedule, oh well. And here's our first major upgrade for the base, we now have a Grand Hall. That plus six morale bonus is uh, very important. This will give me the ability to spend nine skill points on my duplicates. And I also got to use one of the snazzy water coolers as well. Time for a new duplicate. Well, we've got Quinn, but flatulence. Ren, bottom of stomach. Poke shell could be useful, but not quite yet. So it looks like Camille with operating and building. We have a mechatronics engineer. Time for another small upgrade to the base. It's uh, a large battery. It's not a big upgrade, it just helps smooth out the running of the base. Especially when you have few duplicates to be on the hamster wheel to charge up the small battery all the time. Just making sure the research queue is fully stacked all the time until we need to do a big build project. Placing down the supercomputer is going to allow us to research harder technologies. It's also going to put a big dent into our water supplies as well. Although we have 75,000 calories at the moment, I think it's time to start phasing in some food farming. I'm building the farm tiles in blocks of fire because I know I'll be planting mealwood seeds and I need five blocks to feed one duplicate per cycle. Frankie is a very good choice, but I'm just going to take the water this time. So I've now built four blocks of five farm tiles. So this will support four of my six duplicates. The other duplicates will be surviving off the 75,000 calories of food I have stored at the moment. It will also take a number of cycles before these farm tiles actually produce any food. So it's worth planting early, even if you don't plant the full selection of food to cover all your needs. As soon as we get these mealwood seeds planted, we're starting to become more self-sufficient.
We're going to get the prep work done ready for the next episode. But we're going to set up a hamster wheel battery and some deodorizers to turn the polluted air into clean oxygen. Once we start digging in the swamp biome, it will release a slime lung into the polluted air. We want to deodorize this polluted air into oxygen because the slime lung bug can't survive in pure oxygen. I have no doubt that our duplicates will pick up the slime lung bug, but I don't want uh, polluted oxygen all overrunning the whole of my base. With a quick editing cut, the research catches up with us and we can build the deodorizers. Well, Addy's like a wizard. She arrives just when she's needed. Plus five cuisine, yet we are taking her. Here we are at the end of episode one. We've completed 15 cycles and we're all ready to explore outside of the biome and attack the swamp in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.